Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Buster Show podcast. Today we have the creator of Chippy, Chippy's World, Zane. Zane, welcome to the show, my friend. Dude, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. So tell me, how did how did Chippy start? I know you were doing it for years before, you know, obviously NFTs came around and, and became popular, which is my favorite type of creation, by the way. I only, for the most part, love like love the things that existed before nfts because mm. that that guarantees that it's not a cash grab or that it's more of a passion um how, how did chippy start yeah man well so it all started back in 2020 so at the time i was in new york city um i was working on team gary v so i was one of the people that if you ever see gary's content on video audio images like i was on that team creating that content um, so I was in the office working with Gary and the team, and then suddenly COVID happened. Uh, and like a lot of people in New York City, I went from being out all day long to now being stuck inside 24-7. Um, and for whatever reason, um, you know, when, when early on when we had the quarantine, we were locked inside all day, um, I just, I had all this time back. I wasn't commuting back and forth to Hudson Yards to, to the Vayner office. Um, and I just had this itch to like do something more with my time. Uh, especially because I couldn't see my friends or anything. And so um, randomly, I had this urge to get back into art, you know, something that I had dropped about a decade ago. And uh, I bought this old drawing tablet on Amazon, uh, way overpriced, but, uh, you know, it worked. And it came in. And as soon as it arrived, dude, I was hooked. Like, that's all I want to do. Like, I would literally do my Gary V work in the day. And I was so excited. I would get through as much as I could just so I could hurry up and start drawing again. And uh, eventually I started a live drawing show on Instagram every night called Drawing with Zane, or sorry, every week. Uh, it was supposed to be one hour. It would go like four or five hours every night. We'd like make stuff together. Um, and eventually while I was drawing and creating and getting really into it, um, pretty early on, I created a series of characters I was trapped in my little apartment with. Uh, and one of those monsters went on to become Chippy, um, who's this red little three horned devil character. And uh, my small community at the time, who was like really into this kind of stuff, love chippy like everyone was like where's the chippy merch we want more chippy uh and just organically he became the mascot of these series of, of monsters and for the last two years until um you know this year when i launched chippy's world i've just been creating content around chippy you can go to my instagram you can go to even my linkedin uh, i have just a ton of posts of me hanging out with chippy in new york going on adventures with chippy um and so it was just like the last two years of creating chippy and building his personality uh and this character that's awesome and then when when did you begin to think, you know, this could also be an, an NFT project? Yeah, I'd, um, so, you know, I, um, it was a long time. So I joined VFriends. So VFriends dropped in May of 2021. Uh, yeah. At the time I was on, so I was on Team Gary before then, like I mentioned, and uh, I'd say like February, a couple months before uh, VFriends dropped, uh, I was brought on as like the second employee at VFriends. So I was the head of community and content at VFriends. And um, it was just like me and Andy, the president, and we had, you know, all these amazing creators and stuff. And at the time, I didn't know anything about NFTs. This is before Ford Apes and Cool Cats for all these other projects that we all know about now. Um, so it was really early. And uh, as I'm, you know, joining every clubhouse conversation at the time, because at the time, that's, that's what was up. Uh, as I'm learning, watching YouTube videos, as I'm really getting into crypto and Web3 so I can be good at my job to launch VFriends successfully, I'm learning it and the more I'm learning it, just it's clicking, it's making sense um, and I'm getting really into it. And so as I'm like, okay, I'm gonna launch VFriends successfully because that's my job. But also I think eventually I could do my own thing here because I love creating. And that kind of lit the fire and, and, and over time, over all of 2021 last year, collecting, you know, launching VFriends, but also collecting NFTs, being part of other communities. Um, I slowly got to a point where I'm like, you know what? I think I'm ready. I, I think 2022 is gonna be the year I do it. I want to give myself a year to like really understand and make sure I um, fully understand the responsibility of being a founder for a collection like this. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> the, v, the V Friends launch was so interesting too because it was um, it was very early. It was like, yeah, it was so. You know, you, you guys all did a great job of you know educating people around it. People in the collectibles space knew Gary, but. And even still today, but especially back then, people were very critical of the concept of putting real money into, <clears throat> into NFTs. And, you know, Gary comes out with his drawings, which <laughs> now people are like, oh, yeah, it's amazing. But, but then it was obviously a different, um, 
a different attitude because it yeah was, because it was new um but that that was great and you know he has a way of sort of pioneering that which is um which is why you know both of us have spent time we wanted to spend time in that ecosystem and it's it's always great like you know to see um to see where that where that leads people and obviously in this case where it, le- it led uh led chippy um yeah how something I, I feel like you did very well in in the lead up to the drop and um in general is setting expectations how is that something that do you, is that something you think about or or don't think about i feel like you're able to put the noise to the side maybe that's because it's a smaller project you know 2500 yeah. versus 10 or 20,000 so there's less noise and at, like by default if you drop something for 2 eth the expectation is going to be different than if you drop it for 0.1 eth um, yeah so how, how how do you sort of think about setting expectations yeah, I mean, it's, it was a huge focus on that. So I'm glad you caught it. And, um, you know, my biggest thing with Chippy's World was my biggest, the, the biggest weight on my shoulders. And the reason I don't even think I launched last year was I was afraid of like people coming in with those expectations of like this has to moon in like a month. And if I don't get a 50x ROI, I'm going to flood it. Like I was scared of all that pressure. Um, but I knew I wanted to launch Chippy's World. I'm like, I have to launch this thing. I'm so into it. It's going to, it just belongs, it, you know, it has to be a project. And so I'm like, okay, it's on me to then level set expectations the right way. And so I did a couple of things, you know, I, I, even though we launched in April of 2022, I made the discord in December of 2021. So like five months out. Uh, And it was just me. I I had one amazing moderator with us and then slowly grew to four moderators uh, for our discord. And uh, I was just documenting starting in January uh, of me making Chippy's world, me making, me taking the 2020 character that they knew and transforming them into a more accessible 2022 version. And then uh, I would do, I would even do like live um, video streams, like hangouts of me making some of the backgrounds. And like, I would just like show them, I'd bring them along for their journey. So hopefully if they're still along, you know, if they're still there when it launches, they're probably there because they feel connected to the story or the character or the backgrounds and like being there and seeing it. So that was really important. But then also, you know, I launched a Medium article. Uh, This was like one week. Uh, before we launched. And in that Medium article, it's still out there right now. You could you could check it out in, in Chippy's Twitter bio. There's a link there. Um, but in there, I explicitly say, like, uh, if you're looking for um, a certain floor price, if you're looking for a project where I'm going to try to pump the floor, I'm going to manipulate it. Like, I'm just not, this is not the right project. Like, I'm. it's going to be very slow. It's going to be organic. Uh, it's going to be very long-term for me. Um, so if that doesn't excite you, hey, it's not personal. I get it. Um, it just may not be the right fit for you. And also I even went out of my way with, dude, it was the, it was the night before public mint. The one night I should be like sales mode and advertising. And I posted uh, an announcement in our discord tagging everyone and saying like, Hey, I just want to remind you, you know, there's going to probably be some FOMO this week because we're launching. Um, Just be mindful. Like if you can't afford it to go to zero, don't buy it. And like, literally this is like hours before it comes out. (laughs) And I just really wanted to build that culture and, and do my due diligence and put as many reminders I can out there that like, you know, this isn't, it might be a quick flip because I can't control the market. Who knows? You, you actually could have minted and made a 0.1 flip if you wanted to that same week, but that's not the intent. The intent for my, myself as a founder is there's a long-term project. It's more art-based, it's more collectible based. And I'm just excited to like make it happen with all of you over time. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the way to do it. You know, um, I think these organic communities are going to be the ones that survive you know, these sorts of markets, because what we've yeah. seen is like, and I am I love your tweets about this sort of stuff, but it's just like, it's so ridiculous how people act in this NFT space when something happens to the market. And then all of a sudden, everything they've been saying for the last year and a half, it's like all these people that call themselves diamond hands, all of a sudden, you know they they never were it was, it's all it's a lot of facade yeah space. um you know which i guess the the projects are creating themselves because of you know sort of encouraging this momentum because as they say it's like um the faster you grow the faster you fall uh, mm. however long it takes you to grow that's your half-life to you know be worth nothing um, yeah, even bro, but it's such a good point. And like going back to level setting expectations on that same note, like 
even with Chippy's World Twitter, like we have such a passionate group of like community people, like in this bear market. So we launched on 420 and, and sold out on 420. Um, I think like uh, two weeks later, the market started, like the eats started going down and, and all that started start happening. Dude, at least publicly in our Discord or Twitter, not one person was like, oh my God, Chippy's World, the price is like, everyone was like, if anything, it was the opposite. People were like, yo, there's some great steals on the floor right now. Like if you can buy it, like, I love this project. Here's why, like, you can buy this for like half the price I bought it for. You should go get it. Like there were a lot more, there was all those tweets happening. There was no like fun, all the stuff I was scared of. So that felt really good. But also from a level settings perspective, like even though Chippy's World Twitter, I, I, I'm very careful of what I retweet from that account. Um, you know, I, there's some people that talk a lot about floor prices and stuff and it's good, good tweets. Like it's actually positive tweets. Um, I don't even retweet a lot of those because I don't want to create a culture where, where, you know, the feed is only floor price um even if it's good by the way these are good like these are good tweets like hey floor price went up by 0.2 to or 0.02 today like chippy's world is awesome even then i don't always retweet those i like them i say thank you but i don't retweet them because i just don't want to create a culture where success equals floor price up because then what does that mean that, that is, you're saying that when the floor price goes down your project is failing and that's not true um and uh I, i'm just always mindful and, and trying to be very careful on like the pro what the project is really about not Hey, if floor price is up, you're doing good. If floor price goes down, we should freak out, you know? Right. I mean, I, I look at it like in, in physical collectibles, right? I have a Derek Jeter rookie card. I'm a big Yankees fan. That card makes me happy every day. Thankfully, mm. I don't see a freaking chart in front of my <laughs> eyes on its day to day <laughs> performance like it's a stock. That's not yeah. how collectibles are supposed to be. Agreed. I, I think that's a big problem um, because yeah. it's turned it all into investing when a lot of these are, are collecting and they're businesses. Like what I try to do with mine is have it be a real, it's a real business. Like it makes money outside of the NFTs because we have advertisers and, you know, partners yeah. through, through other businesses that all funnel back in, you know, so you don't see, uh, but it, it's a private, it's a private company. But still, you know, you're confronted with the with these numbers that I don't uh, think should even exist. Yeah, I think I you agree. should have an option to like turn it off. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's good and bad to it, but yeah, I, I just think it leads to so much short term thinking, and it, it it also, and it's easy to get caught up in it because I hold projects and I sell projects here and there for like I'm I'm the same people that are buying my own project. Like I'm, I do that kind of stuff in the last year in particular to learn stuff. I was buying NFTs. I was did some flips to like learn how the flip game works in it. Um, but it's so easy to get caught up in there. I got caught up in there a little bit too. This is before Chippy's launch where I was like, if I saw a dip in a floor price in my head for whatever reason, it meant, oh shoot, something bad is happening versus, hey, someone just listed something at a price and has nothing to do with the team not interested anymore like they're still working right. dude right. um and so i I'm, I'm mindful of that so i have you know a lot of empathy for people that if they see a floor price go down they think about that because i've been there myself but yeah man it's um it's just weird how that works and i think the uh physical card example is really good you're not looking at a chart of the value the perceived value every day which is not like it's not swaying the, the value of the card for you yeah, that's why people hold this stuff for their whole lives, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's why people were able to hold, you know, their uh, 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan for mm. 40 years, you know, it's because you didn't, if there was a chart in front of you in this alternate alien currency that told you what it was worth and all you had to do was click a button and it sold, you didn't have to package it. Yeah. That's why I think sort of akin to like spending cash versus like uh, using a credit card or owning a sports card versus an nft with a sports card if you sell it you have to list it you have to do research you have mm -hmm. to there are so many other variables which i think are a good thing like in nfts with different traits and things like that but you have to physically package it go to the post office <laughs> send it, pay for it to be sent with cash or card um and it, it's, it's a little bit of work, but I think it makes you think about whether you really want to you know, get rid of this thing. And in the end, it results in more uh, long-term holders. So yeah, one way that I try to like flip that switch is I send all my holders sports cards. Yeah, I, I got some so, from you. So that it's that same relationship. 
and now they associate the physical with the project mm. with there's distance now you know whereas i like, like that with most like even with apecoin there's no distance with apecoin it's literally yeah. just more money like there's no emotional yeah. attachment do you think, do you think, because I've been thinking about this too, dude, it, and I think it's a good point. What do you, do you think Discord and communities that are 24 seven create that as well? Because in my view, it's like, if I buy into a project and I join their Discord and now I'm spending all my time talking about this project, one day feels like one month because of all the conversations I'm having about this project. So yeah. it's like, I yeah. become impatient almost, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think it all depends <laughs> on like how much you believe in the person like yeah there, there are so many other variables i think it's very difficult and i really i buy very few projects from anonymous founders just just because and i tell this to everybody it's like yeah you're much more likely to get rugged and all of these other terrible things from an anonymous person than somebody who has a brand built up and a reputation and something to lose so yeah you know, I, I, that's sort of how I, I look at it too, but <clears throat> on the 24 seven discord front, it's tricky, dude, like conversations, <laughs> markets. Um, yeah, it's just, there's just a lot, a lot more, Yeah, but I, I don't think is so healthy long-term. I yeah. I just don't know how sustainable it is. Like, that's why, like, even with Chippy's world, our discord's Monday to Friday. Cause at least it's I like, like that. I've never seen anybody do that, by the way. Yeah, I think we were the first, or if we, you know, at least when I posted it, everyone's like, wait, this, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> no one right. else thought about it. And, and for me, it was early on because, so when I was running vFriends, um, when I was the community guy for vFriends, and I was always living on the Discord 24 7, weekends, no matter what night, day, whatever, it became kind of unhealthy. And I'm not blaming vFriends, that was my fault because I was just wanting to pulse of everything all the time. Um, I just didn't, it didn't feel sustainable to me. And so when I was creating Chippy's world, I told myself, okay, like you're, I know myself too well. I, I like to like go all in and do stuff. I need to create purposeful, like intentional boundaries for myself so I can get that rest. And also my, my team of moderate, you know, Discord moderators. Um, and so I, I created this Monday to Friday system where it's like Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern to Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's where all the action happens. And then 9 p.m. Friday night, I shut off all the channels. So they're still read only. You can still catch up if you had a busy week. Um, you just can't like talk. And that way myself, my moderators, we don't have to like manage it as much. I still keep an eye out in case there's some weird scam stuff happening, but for the most part, we're hands off. And it's so nice being, it did, we did that, I think three months ago or four months ago, right before Chippy's World launched. And uh, dude, it's, it's such, a, it's been so helpful. Just like, I love waking up on Saturday morning and not having to like, like actually being able to take a break, you know, from that web, from the 24 seven web three. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think that's a great thing, dude. The thing I don't like about Discord and all these other platforms and even Twitter sometimes is just like it's not evergreen. Like you're mm. not you're not creating for somebody in 25 years. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. Just like, all right, when I look at you know my time, like I'd rather be here talking to you now on video so somebody can get value from this today, tomorrow, and in a year than explaining you know what i'm gonna do yeah that makes sense no it makes a perfect sense yeah i i agree with you because even on twitter like there's been content i posted for chippy's world but it gets buried and, and it's hard to like resurface like after a day or two as a lifespan of a day or two because after that there's so right. many other things right. like you're not going to go back and surf through tweets to find something um and then it's just gone usually <laughs> Yeah, I mean that like I mean back to Gary, like that's the thing that he's done the best is like yeah, cataloging of all that stuff. Obviously, Tia, what, what, how big is the team Gary team? Like 40 people? Uh it Gary. depends. So when I was there, my, my last month there, there was 30 of us, but 15 of them, 15 of us were focused on Gary's content, 15 of us were doing more like agency stuff. So I'd say like 15, 16 on full time on Gary's brand. Got it. Um, but yeah, that that's that's the only way to make the non yeah evergreen, evergreen yeah yeah and and it's so yeah man it's done so beautifully there's actually it's a public place it's called gary v search engine you can just go to google and type it um and you can literally find anything that's on gary's youtube from 2009 until today uh by keyword searches 
by you could do some combinations you could filter by dates so that's how we were making content i, I know that's probably not what you want to talk about but that's how we were making content was literally we would go through the search engine we had ideas and concepts lined up and anytime we needed to like we go back and like find b-roll or find any content from 2009 that he said that makes sense today that we want to throw back to uh we would just find it through the, the search engine we had that's all so, catalog yeah that's so <laughs> that's that's goals right there um and you know twitter's a great search engine too but you know i don't yeah. think many people use it for that um mm -hmm. yeah you can like if, if you typed in zane beginning of chippies you'd probably find your tweets on why you started the brand and you know whatever there, there are a lot of hacks there um yeah i do a lot of twitter searches all the time because uh, and being a community manager like on team gary that we would like search keywords all the time like i'd be like what are people saying about gary's latest video we dropped two days ago and i'd like I do advanced searches and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, Twitter is, is a great place to find stuff. Even in Chippy's world, like I get a lot of inspiration from content, like you said, searching my old content from 2020 when Chippy was being made and like finding details I totally forgot about, but have like now influenced this 2022 collection uh, on, on the it, blockchain. If you hadn't tweeted, it probably would have been lost. Yeah, yeah. There's um, our Medium article that, that I shared like two weeks before our launch. There's a couple of tweets I've embedded in there from 2020 of me doing uh, a live stream back in the day. So it was interesting, man. That kind of stuff really matters. I think like some people ask me like, you know, when you were launching Chippy's World, what helped with gaining that trust or that momentum? And I think a lot of it was just like I mentioned, it documented over time, starting technically at 2020, but for this project in December, uh, five months leading up to the launch, I was sharing stuff on Twitter all the time, behind the scenes, interesting videos and time lapses, just different types of content. But then when I shared the Medium article, uh, which got way more traction than I expected, I, I noticed a lot of projects, Medium articles were like sales pitches almost like, hey, this is how many tokens there are. This is what you can get. And I wanted my Medium article to be like, here's a story of Chippy. Here's everything I've done in the last two years. So by the end of it, you like Chippy, hopefully. Right. And if you do, then I, I follow it up with, okay, by the way, here's what you can get in this project, which is me level setting expectations. But I started off with me just telling the story of Chippy. And I think that really helps set it apart. And by embedding those 2020 moments from Twitter and stuff uh, in, in a nice way, it like really reinforced what I've been saying, which is like, I've been doing this for two years and here's why I'm excited about it. Yeah, you're making the uh, non evergreen evergreen. It's a, it's great. Mm. Yeah, and you know the community building. Obviously, it's it's like a significant portion of you know sort of the skill sets required to build something great in the space. But you know, it's it's that fine line of like community building, getting people excited, but you don't want them too excited because then yeah, then the expectations get too high and it interferes with the actual building, and you'll feel like this need to. Do certain things in a certain time span because I, I feel like this is less true now but it was true last summer whereas mm. people were literally you know like you said if it doesn't 50x you know this is a disaster which is such a crazy that, like obviously that was a unique time yeah um whereas I think people now who are still in it are, are enjoying it more which I think I think it's getting to a healthier place um and I'm yeah yeah I think well I think so many people including myself, because there were, there were certain things I'd buy solely for the intention of a flip. This is earlier same. last year, yeah. right? Yeah, same. Everybody. And I, everyone. And what ended up happening is sometimes, yeah, by the way, sometimes great flips is awesome. But most of the times, and maybe this is just because I'm a bad trader, most of the time they wouldn't go up, they would go down, or I got rugged. It was like an anonymous team that just completely deleted all their socials. And that's it. Now we're stuck with this thing that doesn't mean anything. Um, and, and I think by going through those experiences, even myself, and I don't buy many NFTs now, I, I can't remember the last time I even bought an NFT. Um, but, um, but, you know, I, uh, now I'm buying stuff because it's more of a long-term thing. I'm buying because I like the founder. I like the team. I, I like the thing they're making, knowing, hey, it's probably going to be a year, two years, three years until you see any potential return in the form of anything, experiences, money, whatever. And um, I'm buying less. But when I buy now, there's the, the tensions relieved. I'm not thinking, I'm not looking at the chart all day. I'm not looking at the floor price. I can tell you the floor price of anything I own um, because I, I just don't care. It's more of a long-term move, you know? I, lo I love that. And I, 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 what we were talking about right before we came on too, your ability to sort of block out the noise in terms of events. You're asking <laughs> me, like, at an, I'm in, I live in New York, but I don't yeah. really want to go to 
these NFT NYC events because it's a lot of the same things. I want to see my friends. And I'm, I love meeting new people, you know, sort of through, through them because there's some trust built in there. Um, but, you know, it, all, a lot of these events are just shills. Um, yeah. It's like, hey, we want to prove to you that we're able to make something that looks good. So you're going to anticipate more stuff that looks good. Not that executing is a bad strategy, but right. it, it feels very ingenuine. Um, coming yeah. From most of the projects because it seems I, like all about the money. It's know? all about the money. And, it, and to me, I, I agree with that. It's all about the money. And also it's about like, I, 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 cause you know, we launched Shippies and I think I was telling you this a little bit, we launched Shippies world, um, you know, had, had some level of success. I love it. it it's fun. But um, I had people shortly after we launched in April, reach out to me to do partnerships for NFT NYC events. And at least for the ones I got were people reaching out to collab, like to jo to throw like a joint, like epic party on a rooftop somewhere. And uh, I was like, well, one, that's not my style. Like, when is the last time you saw me at a party? <laughs> but two, you know, uh, I'm just curious, what would the cost be? Like if I wanted, let's say I say yes, what, what would that look like? And dude, I mean, the, the numbers were crazy. They were like, oh yeah, it's just like $20,000, which like technically isn't that much if you look at how much people make in the NFT space. But I was like, that's insane. I told them like $20,000 if I, for, for an event that maybe a fifth of my holders would even be able to come to, doesn't make sense. I'd rather use that 20 K to like start a high quality free merch thing for my holders or, or give that back in some other way or start some other like mini business within Chippy's world. It's it like, to me, it, it's like my whole, it always goes, anytime I'm deciding between things, it always goes back to my original thing, which is like, Hey, is this going to really give back to the holders that bought in? And usually if the answer is no, then, you know, I have to say no. So I feel like a lot of people are like fighting for headlines too. It's like, if I can throw the coolest party, people are going to talk about us this week uh, as well as the money. So yeah, I just, um, that's why I actually didn't go to NFT NYC this year. <laughs> I just like, didn't feel like I was going to miss out enough. Like I obviously you know I'm missing out on some networking potential. Like I get that because I went last year was fun, but um, I just felt okay missing out. I feel like I wasn't leaving too much. I, I was very okay staying back and just working on chippy stuff. Yeah, I think it's, it's a, you know, it's a pretty rare position to be in. I try to be like that for as much as I can, but <laughs> sometimes I FOMO into, you know, going to stuff. Um, yeah. It, it, it's hard, you know, when a lot of your friends are going, but I think it's, um, it's a great skill. You, you only have so much time. You only, yeah. you, don't, you, don't, you don't get more of it and you don't know when you're not going to be able to have as much luxury with your free time. Like you just, yeah, you just don't know. So you gotta, you gotta be a, you know, jerk sometimes with your time and like, <laughs> you know, and it, even then, like, that's a, a, a smart business, business decision not to go, you know, if you're allocating all this time to thought and not stress and, travel which is the least productive yeah. thing in the world by the way traveling like just <laughs> going from place to place is not productive in any way it's yeah well time. i agree well it was so you know it's so crazy because econ just happened in may and originally i was going to go to econ i had my i had my hotel my flight my econ ticket and it was like a week week and a half before econ and i was ready to go and out of nowhere dude it was the weirdest thing out of nowhere i was like I know I'm going to like want to go to VCon because I actually, you know, I launched V friends. Like I actually have this weird attachment to it too, not just getting to meet the people, but um, dude, I, I was looking back at everything and I, I was, I've been just working on Chippy all in since like early February. Like I stopped consulting. I just went like, this is it. I have enough savings for three months. I'm just going like, to make Chippy's world. Hopefully it works. And I've been working so hard at it and then launching Chippy and all that. That like, I was like, I could go to VCon and be surrounded by all this NFT stuff. Um, or I could just use that time and me and my girlfriend, we can go to Disney World <laughs> and just like not talk about NFTs, not talk about anything and actually take take time to spend with each other and, and just be away from everything and use that as a relaxation, uh, like a real break. And, and that's what I decided on. It was the weirdest thing. I, I never thought I would choose anything over VCon because I was so excited for VCon, but ultimately it felt right. You know, it just felt like a good, I just knew I needed rest more than the, uh, you know, not, not FOMO, like being able to FOMO into something. And it was cool, man. I felt like so relaxed and like refreshed when I came back and obviously I caught up with all my, my people that went to VCon. That's awesome. That's awesome. A lot of, a lot of self-awareness there. It's great. Dude. Yeah. I'm trying to be as much like that as, 
I can and I think everybody should. It's very yeah. It's it's, it's beautiful be able to be able to be um you know so so aware of what's best for yourself, you know. Yeah, I don't know how much that I, you know. I just turned thirty. I don't know if I would have done that when I was twenty five. <laughs> like I remember I would put one into everything when I was like a little bit younger. So I don't know how much of that is just like going through those experiences in my twenties. I'm like, nah, it's you know. I think I think I should listen to myself more. Um. So yeah. yeah that that's how I feel a little bit I, obviously I'm I'm younger than that but um, yeah I feel like I've sort of done everything I wanted to do so mm-hmm. now I'm just in this place where it's like all right it, I, I, I I'm gonna be intentional now so if, if it's yeah. um, like you know if it's if there isn't a particular thing or person or you know I'm not I'm not gambling with my time anymore you know, like mm. time and place for gambling where it's like, oh, there might be somebody who I like at this random event of a company I've never worked with, of a project that I've never seen. Let me let me gamble these two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and by the way, it's never just the two hours. It's like getting there, it's getting back, it's thinking about it, it's on your schedule. You say no to something else, so now that's four hours of lost time. But mm-hmm. um and and then you might yeah you, know, you might end up meeting somebody amazing, but you know when you're at a certain point, you're all yeah. There, there's a lot of amazing things in well, places. A hundred percent. And like I, I also think like with Chippy's world at least, like even though we don't have like a roadmap, um, I know exactly what I need to do over the next couple months. Like I already like you know what I mean. Like I have my own personal roadmap that I'm working towards, and I know exactly what the deadlines are. I know what success looks like. I know what failure looks like. And so because of that, I, I'm so like, here's everything that's going to happen. And, and I don't want to say I'm not like fluid at all. Like, obviously I'm open to certain things, but for the most part, I'm just staying on course and I'm trying to hit all these benchmarks that I've set for myself that I know is going to be good for Chippy's brand, myself, the, the holders. And so for me, it's like, part of me is also just like, I'm okay missing out on things because I'm just already focused. I already know what I need to do. Um, you know, and I, and if I can hit all these things, I'm successful. And so that's what I'm always working on. It's like, am I, am I, am I moving further along these, these goals that I have and these deadlines I have? And if not, then I need to get on track. Um, and, and being here, uh, this week lets me do that. Um, so it's really funny how like that works too, is like, even though I don't have a roadmap, I think some people confuse a lack of roadmap with a lack of ambition or taking the easy way out. It's like, no, no, I've got a lot of things I'm working on um that you know over time will show right if i as long as i stay on course also roadmaps are the biggest yeah. concept ever you look at the yeah. biggest companies in the world they don't have freaking roadmaps <laughs> would you have a roadmap that just allows your competition to take what you're going to do a yep. and b it's it's so backwards what companies mm. do is they have a quarterly earnings call where they tell you what they did last quarter not next yeah. quarter they tell you expectations from a dollar perspective but that's only for publicly traded companies they don't tell you what their plans are to get it there and that's yeah it's like what are we doing i think well it, maps are ridiculous i agree i agree it's it, it's always in backwards and also at least now it doesn't make an impact like i've noticed like if you have a project that has a roadmap if you have a project that doesn't have a roadmap um, it's unless your roadmap is like the craziest thing in the world, um, it's just not going to matter. It, it's just not going to matter in the buying decision, in my opinion. And yeah. so for me, that's exactly that's exactly it. It's like I have objectives and key results. Like I've got all these things mapped out for myself that I'm working on. And to your point, you know, when I'm done, when we hit those milestones, then I'm going to show the community, hey, actually, I, you know, I had this as an objective. Here's what we did. Here's what the results were. Here's what we learned. And I just thought I'm, and, and I'm documenting this too. So I'll be sharing some fun stuff when it, when we're done with that. So I can show people how we made it. Um, and I think that's like my thing is like, I just want to like, I have my ideas. I'm going to work on them when they're done. I'll show them the community. I'll be transparent and we'll keep moving, you know? Yeah. I love that. Also, who knows what they're going to do in a year? Like <laughs> yeah. I said that to somebody a year ago. Um, you know, I mean, board, board eight, had they like just launched mm. or, you know, whenever they launched or about a year yeah. ago or whatever it was you know if you told if they said to everybody oh yeah we're gonna have ape coin we're gonna have mutant apes we're gonna have this other side land it's gonna be a video game 
Uh, we're gonna do all these things. Um, nobody, yeah. knows, nobody knows. Um, and I, I think that's a good message to put out there because I think it's applicable to uh, you know a lot of different walks of life. I think the time thing is the most uh, you know a, applicable to anybody, where it's just like you know, it's so it's okay to not not do what a you know it's okay to do it or not do it. Yeah, yeah happy with both because you're getting you know you're gonna get something out of at either i i I like that message a lot i think it's good yeah it's and i agree and i think like as long as i was talking to someone else and it kind of relates to it's just like you know when chibi's world launched um i thought it would take weeks to sell out to be honest and and it sold out fairly quick it sold out like four or five hours and um I am, bro, it was weird. I was happy, but like, I immediately was stricken with like this weird feeling of imposter syndrome. <laughs> Cause now I'm like, wait, I sold out. And like, now it's really real. And, um, you know, it's my first, I mean, I've done things, but this is my first time being the real owner of something. Um, this is, uh, now it's all on me. You know, I can't blame anyone above me. This is, I, I'm, it's all on me. I'm responsible for everything. Given it's a small project, I'm the founder, I'm the artist, I'm the uh, community head of community, I'm everything right now. And um, dude, I had so much imposter syndrome that first day. It was, I don't know where it came from because I'm such I'm so confident. Um, but I don't know. I was like, uh, is is am I supposed to be in this position right now? And um, what what helped me, and it kind of relates to the topic we were just talking about, was just understanding like, okay, I, I've level set the expectations. Um, I've done my due diligence. Uh, I'm working hard. I know all the stuff that's happening on the back end. I'm not just sitting around doing nothing. I'm working on a lot of cool stuff. As long as I think I'm doing my due diligence, I'm trying the hardest I can, um, that's the best I can do. Like, that's all I can really do. I can't control other factors. I can't control the floor price or, you know, volume, but I, but I can work really hard to do the right things and give it my all. And as long as I do that, I think I'm doing the right thing by the holders, you know? And that took me a while because I, I like whenever... Um, you know, early on, especially people were sweeping the floor, right? So people were like, there's one guy who bought 20 at once. I'll, I'll never forget it. 25 at once. It was 25 at once. He sweeped 25 at once. And it was so cool. You know, it was like, I was excited. And then like a second later, I'm like, oh my God, I really got to deliver. And I had this weird imposter syndrome because of that pressure. But um, yeah, I think just, I constantly remind myself, it's like, as long as you're trying your best, as long as you're working hard, as long as you're doing the right things, um, then, then that's, that's good enough, you know? trying your best. I, I love that. I think that's a, that, that's a great place to close because that is a, <laughs> that's the message for everybody. So Zane, thank you so much for doing this. Um, we've got a, we've got a few chippies in the uh, utility mic vault. Happy there. there. Let's go. I've got a few in my collection. Um, so thank you. And uh, thank you for doing this. Thanks, man. I appreciate all the support. Of course. All right, everybody. See you later. Peace. That was great, dude.